In the writing community, we talk a lot about what genres are in vogue or trending in a certain year, particularly when it comes to what literary agents and traditional publishers at big five publishing houses are looking for. But while these trends might come and go, I want to talk today about four genres that traditional publishers typically are not interested in. Because these genres are generally less desirable to traditional publishers, therefore it is also less likely that you will get a literary agent's representation if you are querying them with one of these genres. Because of course the literary agent is representing you to sell your book to a traditional publisher. So if the publisher doesn't really want it, literary agents are not going to take it on either. While getting rejections from literary agents and publishers can feel extremely personal and disheartening, I want you to know that at the end of the day, it is a business decision on their end because the business of selling books is what feeds into their decisions on the authors that they represent and the authors that get book deals. So at the end of the day, it is not personal by any means, it is just business. So as I go through the four genres today, know that I am speaking from the perspective of the big five publishing houses in the US. Those are Penguin Random House, Simon & Schuster, Macmillan, Hachette, and HarperCollins, and all of their various imprints, all of which by and large require that you have a literary agent's representation to submit to them. So that is the very specific publishing path I am talking about as I go through these genres. And I am going to reveal some other options for publishing that you have if you are writing in one of these genres. So absolutely do not get discouraged. Don't get your hopes down if I mention one of your genres, because in fact, you might have an easier path to publishing that doesn't go through one of these big five houses. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you are interested at all in the book publishing industry, or you are currently working on a book, I recommend subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Every week, I either post a video with tips like this about how to get published, or I talk about how to strengthen your book itself, and I would love to have you around. In the description, you're also going to see a link to download my free story self-assessment. If you are working on a story of any kind, it is designed to help you identify your own strengths and weaknesses in the narrative. I know it can be really hard when you are self-editing, which is why I created that resource, so definitely grab that, and it's also going to sign you up for my newsletter that is launching soon. So before we dive in, one more point I wanna make is that there are absolutely examples of books that have been traditionally published through big five publishers in each of the genres I'm about to outline. So I am not saying it is impossible for you to get published or get a literary agent with these genres. I am just saying it is much harder and much less likely than if you are writing another genre that they are more interested in publishing at this time. It's also commonly the case that it is even harder as a debut author working in one of these less desirable genres. So that's why I want to bring this information to your attention today. I'm not saying it is totally impossible. I'm just saying it might not be your easiest path to publication. And I want you to understand why you might be getting rejected if you are working in one of these genres. So let's dive in. The first genre that traditional publishers typically aren't interested in is novellas. Novellas are typically pieces of fiction that are between 20,000 to 50,000 words. And the problem that publishers have with novellas ultimately comes down to the length and therefore the actual size of the book upon printing. Ultimately, the standard length for novels published by Big Five Houses is between 60,000 to 90,000 words and everything in the production process at the publishing house is tailored to that length, which means the page size, the book bindings, and therefore all of the costs associated with printing, they already have down to a science for that specific range of length. So anything that deviates really drastically from all of those formatting standards is less appealing to the publisher because they have to make exceptions. They might have to reformat, redesign things, and ultimately at the end of the day, the book is going to be shorter than say that standard 300 page novel, and that's going to affect the pricing that they can justify for it. Because the consumer, the reader, is getting less story, it's likely that they are going to expect a lower price than a full length novel, which then throws the publishing house's profit and loss statement, which they will make 
for any book deal that they offer. It's going to throw that profit and loss statement totally off because now the price per book is less. Therefore, they're going to have to expect to sell more of them in order to justify what they are paying you as the author. All of that is just really risky, especially because readers are not typically looking specifically for novellas in the way that they are looking for novels. So that's why publishers tend to shy away from novellas. There is also just the reader expectation that is hard to overcome of works of fiction being a certain length, and it is just likely going to be harder to sell them something that is significantly outside of that norm. The second genre that publishers tend to shy away from is poetry collections. Poetry collections simply have a smaller audience than, say, novels or books that are nonfiction. And thus, literary agents and traditional publishers are therefore less interested in investing in them because they aren't certain that they are going to make back their investment in a ton of sales. There's also a similar concern regarding novellas to the length. In order to have a couple or a few hundred pages of poetry, you're going to need to have a lot of poems to take up all of those pages. So that can also be a concern when it comes to poetry collections. Again, it's going to have to be quite a significant collection in order to fit within their standard publishing and production procedure and you know to physically fit nicely on the shelf of course you do have breakout poet superstars like rupee kaur and amanda gorman but in general there are just fewer casual readers of poetry compared to fiction and nonfiction. In fact, the New York Times bestseller list doesn't even have a poetry section, unfortunately. As I alluded to in the beginning, there are many other publishing paths, especially for poetry, that might even be easier than pursuing traditional publishing via a big five house. So definitely keep watching to get to that section where I talk about where you can potentially publish your poems and your collection. The next genre that traditional publishers are not typically interested in is short story collections. Now, many of the points that I raised about novellas and poetry collections apply to short story collections in that there are typically fewer readers seeking out that specific type of book and there can be concerns with length and therefore production costs. With short story collections, there's also an issue of continuity. Do all of these short stories actually belong in the same collection? Is there an overarching takeaway or thematic link that the reader can identify throughout all of the short stories? or do they really feel disparate and really independent of each other? It's important that a short story collection really justifies being published as a collection versus having those stories independently published. In short story collections are particularly difficult to publish as your debut book. It is much more likely for a publisher to publish a short story collection by an author who is already well established in the genre. It is much more likely for a publisher to have an established relationship with a novelist who has a track record of significant sales. And then if that writer wants to publish a short story collection, the publisher is likely going to be much more interested in publishing it because that author already has a significant and established readership who is probably going to buy the short story collection just like they would buy that author's repeat novels. It's much easier to ask an established audience who already likes a novelist's work to then read their short fiction and check out this new form versus asking an audience to experience this author for the very first time through the short story form. And the last genre that traditional publishers typically don't take on is faith-based books. Imprints at the big five publishing houses typically don't publish books that are intended to provide spiritual guidance or take the reader on a specific spiritual journey or that include heavy references to religious texts such as the Bible or the Quran. In the case of Christian fiction and memoirs, there is actually a very robust Christian publishing landscape that kind of operates in parallel to traditional publishing where there are literary agents that take on Christian books and represent Christian authors to these Christian publishing houses, but they are not part of the Big Five publishing house. So you would still go down a similar path, but it is almost happening in parallel or tangential to the 
general big five publishing path, which publishes more general fiction and memoir that does not have a specific Christian bent to it. These Christian publishers also have specific connections to outlets like Christian bookstores that tend to make a lot of the sales in that particular market. So there's definitely still a pathway for faith-based books. It just might look a little bit different than going through a literary agent that typically sells to big five publishing houses. An important point here is that if religion is a component of your novel or your characters are religious or you're writing a memoir and it does mention your faith, that does not mean that a traditional publisher or a literary agent is not going to be interested in your book. I'm specifically talking about books that are intended to provide that spiritual guidance and that is the overarching mission rather than a story that is delivering a narrative that contains some references to religion. That is completely fine. Of course, there are tons of books out in the market where the characters are undergoing a spiritual journey themselves or they are religious. It's just about if the spirituality or the religious nature is actually the dominating force of the book in which case I would say an alternate publisher is your better path. So now let's talk about what you should do if you are writing one of these genres. I really hope you're not feeling discouraged because as I've been alluding to this whole time, there are plenty of other outlets that will publish you and you absolutely don't have to give up your publishing dreams. The first is to publish via literary magazines or literary journals. Submitting to literary magazines or journals does not typically require a literary agent's representation, which means there is a much lower barrier to entry, which is amazing, especially for first time authors. Many are interested in short stories and poetry and some, depending on the length of your novella, would also accept a novella, especially if it's on the shorter end, say 15, 20,000 words. Another plus of submitting and getting published in a literary journal or magazine is that you can then use that publication as a writing credential that you reference in your query letter if you do end up reaching out to literary agents with a different book project. Another pathway to publication is independent publishers that are not part of the big five. So these are typically smaller presses that still will give you an advance for your book and they still will handle all of the design and the editing and the publicity and marketing. It is just likely going to have a smaller distribution than if you went to one of the big five imprints, but that's not to say that these are not legitimate presses. Many of them publish books that go on to make bestseller lists, that go on to win awards, and smaller indie presses tend to be more experimental with what they publish because they're less concerned with the corporate bottom line that these mega conglomerate publishers have to use to make their business decisions. They're less concerned with genre trends and many of them have really amazing reputations just as good as big five imprints. So definitely check these out. Now the key is some of them will still require a literary agent's representation but some do not. So really just check out if there is a publisher out there that is smaller in distribution, but has a great reputation and has a history of publishing your specific genre. And the final option is to self-publish. Self-publishing gives you complete and total control over your publishing timeline and process, and it is a completely legitimate pathway for you to publication. It is always an option if one of these other publishing methods does not pan out. I hope these tips help give you a more robust understanding of the publishing industry, what publishers are looking for, and why they might reject certain genres. Let me know in the comments which genre you're writing in. I would love to know what you're currently working on, as well as what your plans are for publishing, whether it be big five publishing or trying to go through a literary journal or a smaller independent publisher or self-publishing. I have a companion video to this one that goes through genres that traditional publishers love and are pretty much always looking for. So if your genre isn't one of these, maybe check that out and see if I mention it there. As I mentioned at the start of this video, make sure to grab my free story self-assessment. If you have a current work in progress, I promise it's going to help you take it to the next level and set a game plan for strengthening it even further. As always, if you found this video helpful or interesting, please hit that like button and subscribe. It helps me know I am bringing you useful content and allows me to continue growing this awesome community. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.